Welcome back to another episode of Dark Souls 3 Lore Through. Um, yeah, we're going to investigate this Corvian settlement and, uh, and see what we can learn about the inhabitants here. No one's attacking us. Everyone's dying. Um, they're just proceeding up here in mass. They breathe out toxic. <laughs> that was a course correction at the last second. It's more rotten here and a simple gem. A quick little Way to get back out. You'll notice I didn't rest at the bonfire, and that's because I didn't want to fight this fool again. Um, and actually, we're going to continually go through this area, so I'm going to continually not rest at the bonfire. Yeah, the rot's even like building up on the houses in this area. It's a lot more down here on the bridge and, and everything. Alright. into the bonfire and get this item we saw up here. I really don't need a, a Twinkling Titan or any uh, Crystal Lizard at this point, but I'll still show them, I guess. Okay. Alright, and the thing here is that there is. Oh, one of those guys dropped an item too. But there's a um, item over here. The crow quills. Thrusting sword wielded by the Corvian knights and a special paired weapon. When twin-handed, brandish four thin edge blades in the left hand. In their infatuation with Sister Frida, the Corvian knights swore to protect the painting from fire and to this end took to the execution of their own brethren. So it makes sense that they, uh... Makes sense that they, all these guys are like dying and uh, and have very little fight left in them because they're being hunted by. Oh, what? <laughs> nice. I thought they had a timer, but I guess the timer is when you're close. That's crazy. I think that's new for this. I, I, that can't be the way it is for like Dark Souls One, for example. There's a lot of looping around here, so we're just going to try our best. And we actually get to see one of the Corvian Knights wielding this weapon. Taking care of these guys. Oh, 
They're a little brutal. So we have this uh, gate that doesn't open from this side. So that's kind of our goal. Although we have a lot to go through here. Dark gem. Another rot bed. Uh, there's nothing over there. Almost have enough to kill these guys. Uh, and here's just another way to get down here. Then we have these guys try to push us off. I still can never avoid it. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> a lot of this uh, at this point is just going to be like running around and doing all these like just unlocking doors and running around and collecting items here. So that's where we first came in. It's above where we talked to the guy about burning the world. Oh, there's a guy left alive down there. Looks like these guys have some magic. Get the crow talons as well. Talons used by the Corvian Knights. Inflicts five perpendicular slashes in their infatuation with Sister Frida the Cordia. Same description. Alright, so yeah, let's come down here, and come down here, and go up here. There's just so much to do around here. Uh, by the way... These are uh, gold rusted coins, and you can only get them from dropping off. Um, I won't be doing that. Um, I will be doing this, though. Slave Knight Set. A cloth hood issued to slave knights, colored red to vibrantly signify their stature. Long ago, the only the undead served as slave knights, warriors used as fodder in the bleakest of battles. They grew decrepit, at their skin charred black and their bones twisted. <clears throat> Eventually they went outright mad, but were never relieved from duty. A fine craftsmanship made this a symbol of honor. So, I will just say that the guy that gave us the, um, wow, that gave us the painting to walk into, he, um, yeah, he uh, was wearing that set. See, so he was a slave knight of some sort. A 
Okay, so there's a Twingy and Titan Knight, and there's also this guy here. Oops. I don't like fighting, so we'll let him rest up there as we continue along with the level. Because the only thing to do is drop down into that area, that rot bed, which we already found. Um, let's see, is there any other items up here right off the bat? No. We want to jump in here. Uh, but first, I want to do something just in case we die, which is likely. Um, <clears throat> by the way, the uh, there's some guys back here, and this whoa, that's glitched out. I've never seen him do that. Um, I think this just may be reference to uh, Ariandel or Ariamis. Is he still in there? Can we see in there? I mean, there's something in there. But he's not moving. Um, I guess we don't have to go grab this, um, but there's a there's a magic in here that I often die <laughs> trying to get. Uh, but here's our shortcut, which brings us to uh, the next area over here. But And then this is locked. So, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do this. If I'm just going to try to... like okay so there's two of these crow guys at once that take forever to kill I obviously can't fight this guy up on the rafters I can come down to this guy who I guess they're the two different Corvian Knights I need to grab that <clears throat> this is some sort of chapel by the way but like I can't kill this guy in one hit Both guys come down. I mean, it's just mass chaos. That was crazy. I mean, I'd prefer not to, you know use up all my Estus for this next boss thing. Let's see if we can rest. Okay, nice. Alright, let's read that spell. A lost way of white miracle launches a white discus which slices into foes and returns to its conjurer. Long ago, when the imprints left by the gods were still deep, miracles of the way of white existed alongside Aureoles. Um, those who yearn for long lost Aureoles fully believed that they would return one day. So, those little dots, those little circles in the first game that I think I explained it. If you do magic by them, it kind of increases the magic done if you do that. And if you do that, then they'll grow bigger in other worlds. Well, these are little discs like that that you can actually use as a weapon. So. That's, I guess they call those aureoles.
Right. All right. So just one of those guys is tough for me, let alone... Although I think you can run by him. Like, I don't know. I think it's pretty easy, but I just... In general, they're not that tough for me, but... You know... So I believe if I do this and get far enough, he won't follow. But maybe he will. Get some more of these trees. Some rusted coins. Yeah, we can see down there. A young white branch, I guess. It's another tree we could fight. All right, let's go take on this guy. We'll talk about everything in this room in a second. Time and time again, every fleeing man must be caught. Every secret must be unearthed. Yes. Such is the conceit of the self-proclaimed seeker of truth. Sir. But in the end, you lack the stomach. Sir Wilhelm. The that you'll bring upon yourself. So this is the guy from the beginning. Now he heals himself a lot, which I don't like. But he can be easy to parry. Can be. him from healing but he also has a dark hand right there you can see so like you know he's definitely from Londor oh well, we can't block those So we heard about Sister Frida, but he calls her Lady Elfrida. And yeah, his name is Sir Wilhelm. And he uh, he was the guy we spoke to at the beginning, if, if, if I didn't say that or if that wasn't clear. And upon killing him, we get the contraption key and his onyx blade. Um, key to the contraption accessing the library attic. The key to the contraption leading to the attic of the archive found on the edge of the Corvian settlement. After Sir Wilhelm led a white-haired woman to the attic of the library, he kept this key as if it were his life. Huh. Well, we'll have to see who that is. Elfrida, the eldest amongst her sisters and leader of the Sable Church, bestowed this sword to her knight. Only the sword was a farewell gift, and acceptance signified the knight's resignation from Elfrida's services or service. Elfrida's black flame, and wreath blade with black flame, born of the similarly hued flame that smolders within her. Okay, so now we are getting a connection. Frida, Sister Frida, is the leader of the Sable Church and the eldest among her three sisters. We know Yuria personally, and we've read about Lilian. I believe. Lillian's the youngest, Yuri's the middle, middle, and Elfrida, or Frida, is the eldest. 
So, yeah, somehow the leader of the Sable Church is here in the Painted World, uh, which makes sense why they know so much about us being the Lord of Hollows. It also says that she has a black flame uh, with, smoldering within her, and we know that that was created by Igil, Igil uh, in this game, the um, Grave Warden, who was once uh, assistant to King Ol the High Lord Walnir. So I wonder if that puts her... It did say that <coughs> the Grave Warden slash Pyromancer discovered that black flame, like, like found it. He didn't, like, invent it in a sense. I mean, it said High War Lord Walnir did, but we know that that's not true. Um, but anyway, I'm wondering if, you know, there is, like, a, a, a kind of, like, natural state of black flame. Uh, yeah, and so we can see all these uh, statues here, um, which kind of, are they all the same and cut in different ways? Maybe. Yeah, it looks like they might be the same, but they just have different parts broken off. But yeah, um, they've been damaged for sure, um, as, uh, like maybe intentionally. Like, in other words, it doesn't look like they've crumbled. We don't see any rock around the base. However, that could just be an oversight. So, yeah, and this is just a library in the painted world. So let's go see who this white-haired woman is in the attic of the library. I love this. How it smashes on these books. I love that. It just dis makes them disappear, but it's still, it's still pretty cool. So we can see here um, this white-haired lady. Um, uh, drawing with her hand. Sorry, I had to click away. Drawing with her hand here. And um, she's like carving something out on the table. Let's see what she has to say. I believe. I feel the scent of ash upon thee. Thou art the one of whom Uncle Gale spoke. The one to show me flame. Uncle Gale spoke about. Hmm. Tis good. When this is done, may I return. The door is open thanks to thee. So was she being trapped up here? There's probably a reason she was being trapped by Frida and Sir Wilhelm. Tis good. I'll head off to paint. I promised Uncle Gale I would. Aha! So she's the painter that we've seen in the chapel. Tis good. When this is done, may I return. The door is open, thank you. Um, this is kind of a weird thing, too. Uh, there's a bonfire right there, and then it says does not open from this side. I guess it's a psych out or something? Because <coughs> there's nowhere else to go. I mean, there's other places to look at, but they're just dead ends. And you just open it. I'm not really sure what that's all about. And now we go to Snowing Mountain Pass, a quite grueling area uh, in this DLC. But hopefully we can kind of take care of these guys one by one. These guys can... These guys can gang up on you for sure. Let's see what we can do here. You gonna come down? Yeah. 
got to be careful who's behind you here. There's always one more. Always one more. Can't get everyone. Let's see how well I remember this area. Oh god. Should get these guys over here. Those guys before we take care of these guys. We'll take care of this guy. It's like a puzzle in a sense, like you just have to do everything in the right order, otherwise you'll find yourself getting overwhelmed. With like 50 guys. Get the follower shield. Standard shield used by the Farron followers, crafted with wood and reinforced with metal, imbued with a faint resistance to the Abyss. Which makes sense, because they would be fighting the Abyss. Yeah, look at how many guys there are. I think it's just insane. try our best to do this in one pass here so it's easier So we can see the bell here is interesting because Sir Wilhelm said that he didn't hear a bell toll and it's probably because they destroyed the bell and threw it out in the woods so that no one could get called in to um, to save them or whatever. Oops. A little too early there. There's these kind of cool trees similar to Dark Souls 2. You can push them over and create a shortcut. I wish that was more often a shortcut. And we get this, which is the actual elevator that's in the room with uh, this painter that we didn't go up before because it was locked. Well, let's head back. Oh, um, and then we can go this way. Again, it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. I'm trying to get everything. That was lucky. So let's see here. What's the best way to go from here? Um, full disclosure, I'm not getting everything in this area. There's a couple milkwood things that I don't have any interest in getting. But I'll I'll talk about them. You can look at them. Um yeah, so here's the bell. We want to go left here, but first, so yeah, like this area here, uh, if you step on that area, you'll fall down into this chasm here. Let's see if there's a safer area to stand. And there's just a bunch of souls, um, but there's those milkwood knights. There's a ton of them too, and 
there's a special uh, weapon down in this cave right by that guy. But I want to do this in one pass, so we're just going to skip that. Because there's no need to grab it. Okay, there's a bunch of wolves here. Oh, weird. Did not stagger them. Gotta get them before they howl. There it is. There it is. A lot less dogs in this area. This one always falls off the edge for me, but I usually fight it down here and it always like tries to backtrack around me and then falls off the edge, which is funny. Follow a torch, which is actually a weapon. An offensive torch used by the Farron followers provides light and doubles as a weapon. Some forms of the abyss manifest as pus within the body treated from ancient times with fire. So I think that's a reference to the bloated undead in the Ariamis painting that shoots toxic at you. But when you kill them with fire, they don't drop any pus. Um, I don't know how significant it is that that was the abyss from, you know, from that game, but it's kind of cool to learn about that. So yeah, here's a better view. We could just drop down here and just do the one thing, but <clears throat> then we would be homeward boning and have to do a bunch of areas over again. So as I say, I'm sure there's a 100% playthrough online. You can go look that up if you want to see that. We still have to fight our share of uh, Millwood Knights, Milkwood Knights. that delay though, right? Oh boy. Like, you just eat through so much justice. Well, I do, obviously. Like, I'm sure there's people that... And that's why I'm not going to go down there. Oh, that's so frustrating, too, because we just went around and killed everyone. Now everyone's going to be alive. Uh, thankfully, we can uh, take the shortcut. It's actually a big shortcut. can go up there, but we're going to do this first. We don't have the shortcut unlocked. Um, so it's not a bad, <clears throat> we don't uh, redo everything, it's just, I hate redoing anything at this point. <laughs> I should have gotten it the first time. Good night with just all of my flasks.
there's that guardian thing that they have. Just gotta remember to just wait five seconds before dodging their attacks. They're a little different than the other ones where their attacks don't match. Like, you can easily tell, they're just this terrible delay. What? There's some more Milkwood Knights coming up, I'm just not gonna fight them at all. Cause I don't like these guys. <clears throat> but behind him we can get the quick quick stone hammer. A stone hammer wielded by the Millwood. It's not Milkwood, it's Millwood. Um, knights with a head of naturally formed stone. The Knights of Millwood would fight hand in hand with the earth itself, and this weapon among the eldest in all Millwood is symbolic of that relationship. And it does this quake thing. Uh, can I yield it? show that off. I can. How do you... Oh, that must be the other thing I'm thinking of, actually. Where it, like, stabs it into the ground and... Anyway. Alright. So, yeah, I'm just gonna go through these guys. They luckily don't follow you too badly. And we can open up the other shortcut here, which brings us right above the other shortcut so that we can kind of run up right through here and we'll be fine. But uh, for now, let us continue on with the rest of the level. We are getting close to the boss. And in fact, I might get to the boss and then I might uh, cut it and then we'll do two episodes. Oh, wow. So they shoot out this the, the maggots, which could give you bleed. I don't think I have... Oh, I do have, I have a torch. Okay, perfect. So that will never affect me. This area is kind of ridiculous. Um, is there a secret passageway here? There. Uh, we'll go down that in a second. <clears throat> so this is the terrible ambush here, and I think this is just like dung pies. Something silly. Um, but yeah, let's go up and uh, unlock this kind of shortcut here. So yeah, basically we're underneath the chapel now with Frida. And uh, now we can actually open this up so that now we're. There's still that thing, that breaking happening. Anyway, there's Frida in the bonfire. Alright. But, uh, yeah, let's get down here and go through one by one. And, um... <clears throat> we have to turn a wheel here. This is very similar to a painting of Ariamis. When, um... We had to go in the bone wheel skeleton room. This is a lot more welcome than bone skeletons. There's a lot more of these guys, but uh, they're so much easier to deal with, especially with a torch. They're kind of made obsolete. I didn't even get hit by that. They 
do do that dive attack, but I don't. I don't. I just in general don't think this is like all that bad of an area, which is good. I don't want it to be. I mean, you know, these guys can. Ooh, these guys can gain up on you, of course. Which might make it a little difficult, but it's easy to not have that happen. We can obviously see all the rot here. handled. Okay, they do do that. Get rid of that. Okay. Let's see. Now we get Wilhelm stuff, Sir Wilhelm, which obviously we'll read in a second. Is a uh, is a hidden door somewhere around here? So we got a blood gem. And let's turn this wheel, exact same wheel as we found in Ariamis. No, not the statue in the library. There's a child in this one. And it, just the same way, turns around <clears throat> facing the other direction. It opens a secret passage for us. As ashes will be, ever seeking fire. She seems content about it. Maybe she knows something we don't know. Can't remember where it is. So we'll do this last little area here, <clears throat> hopefully, and that is hopefully successfully, and then um, I'm going to end the episode and we'll, uh, we'll take on the rest of this DLC in the last one. Oh my goodness. I like how that did like half of my life bar for some reason. Okay. Alright. Like, why did that take half of my life bar right then? That's so weird. And this is gonna take another half. Ugh. Okay, so that take not. Okay, Pyromancer's Parting Flame. And Homeward Bone, of course. Um, 
The pyromancy flame of livid pyromancer Dunnell that attracts the echoes of death. When Dunnell lost his hideous spouse, he gave his own pyromancy flame as an offering, which transformed into a parting flame. Not long after, Dunnell became a mad spirit, damned to wander the lands. Um, I don't think we know mu that much about Dunnell, um, but it does say he lost his hideous spouse, and um, that kind of is an indication to me that he might have been married to um, um, Priscilla, because she was described as hideous, being an, uh, a crossbreed. Um, so that's my best. And then this is now the area... This looks like the area in which we fall off um, to go back to uh, An Orlando. And so, I mean, it also makes sense that we uh, then get invaded by Dunnell here in the same arena that we apparently fought. has this uh, pyromancy of the smoldering lake people. He keeps healing in a way that's frustrating. He has the Uchi. And he ran out. Nice. We didn't need anything. And then he gives us Floating Chaos, which is that pyromancy that the guys in the Smoldering Lake had, and that he also just showed. Pyromancer Dunnell was fascinated by the ceremonial art employed by the clerics of the Smoldering Lake. Chaos burns away in the blink of an eye, but was the primordial life born in the bed of chaos and a grievous symbol of Isola's sin? Yes, well... We know that. All right, so that is going to be it for this episode. We've taken care of most everything to do uh, with this area, and we are going to um, take on the main boss uh, in the next episode. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, maybe it'll just be a super short episode next time, um, just because we don't have a ton to do, but it's going to be too long for this episode. So... Uh, see you then. Bye.